Hey guys, Gavin Syme here, and I want to take a quick moment today to talk about real infrared, getting real infrared, whether you're using a filter or an infrared camera. Now, I recently had my camera converted to infrared. Uh, I use LifePixel, but there's there's lots of different uh, places out there that do it that do a good job. But I had the actual infrared filter removed on my 5D Mark II, which I wasn't using much anymore, and it's just doing phenomenal infrared work. Now, infrared can be great for black and white, harkens back to the film days, right? But it's it's more than that because infrared gives you uh, some abilities in color too that are that are really kind of remarkable. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to show you guys a couple of things with that. Here's what you're going to deal with with infrared. If you've ever done infrared, you probably got something like this, right? Now there's a couple ways to do infrared. If you're not ready to go to the conversion method yet, you can get a good infrared filter like the Hoya R uh, R72. Great infrared filter. Here's the thing, though. An infrared filter, it's blocking the infrared light. You still have the infrared blocker on your camera, right? So the infrared filter's coming in, and it's going in here, and it's blocking the visible spectrum. And so it takes really long exposures to get through the infrared blocker. Some of the infrared light leaks through, so you can still do infrared photos. But look, this is a... Uh, this is a 10 second exposure to get this, right? Now here's the common problem that you're gonna find with infrared, particularly in Lightroom. So let's talk about infrared and Lightroom. A lot of people that shoot infrared will say, no, you need to use Digital Photo Professional or you need to use the software that came with the camera because otherwise you won't get the quality. I'm, I'm not sure that's entirely true. Lightroom's a good processor. There's some processors that do have finer color. For example, Capture One in some instances have has finer color. Some would argue that the native RAW converters give you a better spectrum, and, and in some instances they probably do. Here's the main problem that you run into. You can crank the white balance all the way down and you still have this horrible red tone, right? So what do we do to deal with that? There's There's a couple things we can do. Yes, you can convert to a TIFF in something like Digital Photo Professional or something like that, where you have a bit more control over the white balance. I find the software to be rather clunky in, in that particular case. I don't like it that well personally. But also, I had some trouble with the, the actual quality. I just really felt like I when I converted it over in there, and I'm sure I could dial in, but I just wasn't liking the results that well. So some people will say, oh, it'll be way better if you use DPP. I feel like if I dial it in in Lightroom, I can actually do really well. Use whatever software works with you. That's not the critical thing. But let's say you want to use it in Lightroom. What I would do is I would take an infrared file, be it made with a with a converted camera or just with a, with a filter, right? I would convert the raw file to a DNG, and then you can actually go into the DNG profile editor. These are both uh, downloads that you can get. And the DNG profile editor has, under its color, you can do a lot wider color calibration. So instead of the regular, I would actually make a color white balance profile that's all the way down, right? Then I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna save this, export it, and save it as a profile, okay? And it's gonna put the profile into the camera raw profiles, which then when I restart Lightroom will show up in Lightroom. So if I go down here to my profiles, you see I have an A7R infrared profile and it shows up because that's the camera. It has to match the camera on my 5D Mark II files. I have a 5D Mark II profile. So I'm gonna click this and you can see it's still way off. But that's because the white balance, I didn't set it in camera, and it's way off. So let's go to auto white balance. Okay, there we've got rid of that red cast. Now this is a filter. It's not a super color or anything like that. When you have a camera converted, you can get cameras that allow more color in. So in some scenes, you would get more color, but this is a fairly flat scene. You know, so we're getting this, and it would be great for black and white. I could do black and whites on this. You know, this isn't a great exposure. I'm not saying this is the perfect image, but it's just an example. So you can get rid of that red cast in Lightroom by using making a profile that reduces the white balance way down in the camera profile and then your regular white balance treatment in Lightroom still works so you can you can micro adjust it using this it just gives you the range you need in fact let's give you an example here's one shot on my converted 5D Mark II a couple of these right and so with these where I did some white balance in camera it's still too red for Lightroom but the white balance is fairly where it should be what I'm going to do is just select that 5D Mark II profile. Now we have an infrared that looks the way that it should. Okay, same with this, right? I can go and select the 5D Mark II profile. There's flesh tones in the infrared. So now you have this weird blue cast, right? And you might be thinking, well, hey, wait a minute. You know, there's, there's 
where's the color? Where do I get this? See, now here's something taken up by Zion. How did I get this color? Well, here's what we started with, okay? And actually, if you're a member of my photo kit over at simefx.com, I'm going to include some of these helper files so you can experiment with this stuff yourself. And so head over there to simefx.com slash kit to uh, get the files if you're a member of PhotoKit or if you want to check out joining PhotoKit for our monthly photo kits. Now, what did we do here? Let's reset this real quick. See, this one's this one's all red if we start out too, right? So we go down and we take the profile. So reset just to show you. And we do that profile to bring it out. And then, of course, I did some more adjustments to get this look. So now we're at this point right here, right? What then? How do we get, we have this kind of weird surreal off color. At this point, if we're doing black and white, we can actually go straight to converting. In fact, this one, my primary process was a black and white. And so if we go to my history here, this is the black and white that I'm working on with this. And infrared is neat. One of the things with infrared, where in normal photography, we're looking a lot of times for magic hour, for soft light. Infrared actually loves the harsh light. And so you'll see this like right here, for example, where I'm actually shooting in late afternoon harsh light. And in this context, it gives a very interesting image. And of course, if I was doing a black and white or something, really gives me just those rich contrasts and tones. And so the infrared is really a completely different way to see light. And we can do things with it that we just aren't going to do with a regular camera. One of the things I also love about it is it gives me things to play with at times a day where the light isn't ideal for really good images under normal circumstances. Now let's go over to Photoshop real quick. And here's that same image, right? So we have this weird off color. Let's say we want to color infrared. What you want to do, they, you hear it, it talked about swapping the red and blue channels. Now you can do the same with this with an infrared filter or a converted camera, but you can see with my super color converted camera, a little more color is coming through. So I actually have a, a nice amount of color, but my sky is orangey, right? It should be, it should be blue. Okay, so the red and blue swap does this, and it flips them around. Now, of course, I may still need to shift some hues and stuff because it depends on how the light spectrum is coming through, how I white balance. Understand that the camera is seeing a non-visible spectrum of light. The colors are not going to come through the same, but oftentimes we want to get a semi-realistic look. And so you go back here, and you can see after some tweaking, this is what I got. I'm not actually finished with this image yet, but we went from here to here by working it over. So a few different things you can deal with. So bottom line, you can do a filter. It's a great way to start out and just experiment with infrared. You're gonna have to do long exposure stuff. You can have a camera converted, one of your old bodies you're not using. It's great if it has live view, it makes it a lot easier because then you can really experiment. You can see the exposure because exposure in zones, they don't, the principles are there, but they don't all work the same with infrared, okay? Uh, you can use whatever software you want, but if you wanna use Lightroom, you can make a profile for the raw files coming out of that by converting it to a DNG and then saving a profile out here, which will put it in your raw profiles, which will then show up in Lightroom. And then at that point, you can do black and white, you can do color, you can do whatever you want. And so the, the creativity options are really cool. There's a lot of potential in terms of creativity and what we can do with the image and just some really neat stuff. In fact, let me just show you a couple more images as we wrap up here and I will pop this open. So a couple more I did, you know, fall color in the infrared, really cool. You can see we got some harsh light, this really blue cast, but what happens once we flip the infrared? Look at this, very unique image. And the color is, is not the same as we would see it in the real world. We're actually seeing the fall color in white tones and the, the evergreens in the orange tones, but can produce some really beautiful results. Uh, you know, things like clouds often have a really richness to them. And so infrared takes good post-processing. You still want to get it right in camera. You still want to dial things in. You still want your image making to be fine. And then you think about your visualization. Do you want to do black and white? Do you want to do color? Where are you going with the infrared? And then you get some finesse into your post-processing. But you want to start that with a good initial process, a good initial color conversion. Then if you need to, you can go to Photoshop, do that red and blue color swap. Not a great way. I haven't found a great way to do that in Lightroom because when you're doing the red and blue swap, you actually are going into the channel mixer and you're swapping your reds and your blues. And so you can see how I can switch it back and forth. Here's what we started with on this. 
And what this is doing is you're going into that channel mixer and you're swapping it. Instead of 100 on the red, you're going to zero and 100 on the blue. And then you're going to the blue and you're doing zero here and 100 on the red. So it's a swap of those channels. Now I've actually put this into just a real quick action. It's nothing fancy. But I'm going to include that along with a sample file on the photo kit. So if you want to play with it yourself, you can tinker around and see if infrared might be something that you want to want to do more with. Or maybe you already have some infrared files to work with and you want to go with that. But hey, that's all for today. I just wanted to share some infrared. I've been doing quite a bit of work with it lately. A lot of potential in terms of the light and the color. It's real beautiful stuff. Have fun, guys.